In August 2020, I posted a video on a comparison between the Leica M10R and the Leica SL2 and whereas in the shadows both cameras were very capable recovering information out of dark parts of the image, in highlight sections in particular on the sky, the Leica M10R seemed to be superior to the Leica SL2. A week ago I posted another video where I looked into dynamic range of the Leica SL2 sensor only and I also included, let's say, some thoughts on dynamic range in general and uh, why it is easier to recover information out of the dark than out of the highlights. In this video I'm going to close that chapter with a third video on concentrating on highlights only on the Leica M10R with the Aposumicron 50mm shot at f5.6 and under weird conditions here as you can see because it was raining I was driving to the spot where I typically do these kind of test shots but when I arrived rain came down and uh, it was not as pleasant as it used to be and I will mount this time the same Aposumicron 50mm from the Leica M series lens system on the Leica SL2 with the adapter from M to the L mount system and in this way make sure we have exactly the same lens which is then between the outside world and the sensor. Let's kick off the video. So I started with the Leica M10R and took the correct exposure and if you look into my shooting parameters here, an ISO of 100, which will be the same on the Leica SL2, self timer with 2 seconds, 1 over 360 seconds, fully manual mode of course, 50mm upper Summicron lens. I used matrix metering here because I think the shooting environment allowed for this and I'm going for the JPEG and of course the digital negative to get the best possible comparison between the two different raw images from the two different cameras. Since it was raining, I was not in the mood of building up a second tripod to get my iPhone sturdy. So I'm having in one hand my iPhone and in the other hand I'm operating the Leica M10R. So apologies for a little bit of shake here, but I think you see what I'm doing. I'm now basically slowing down the shutter speed and getting more and more highlights into the sky. And uh, I will take it to the extreme here and go now to 1 over 45 seconds and you see the highlights in the sky blow out the exposure completely. And I will even go one step further and later look at this in post and go to 1 over 15 seconds in order to have the most extreme highlight situation here where we try to recover information as good as we can later in post. On the Leica SL2 I was now replicating basically what I did with the Leica M10R but I had to go for slightly different exposure values on the shutter speed because the Leica M10R is going for half shutter speeds and uh, the Leica SL2 is going for one third shutter speeds and that made it not really possible to completely match it but uh, I think for a comparison how to recover information out of highlights that will not be a problem and will not in any way dilute let's say the non-scientific analysis I'm providing here. So in a moment I think we are done with the shooting here, then we go into post, go into Lightroom, do some exposure matching, see where we end up on both cameras and finally close that chapter. So I'm now here in Lightroom and the upper row of images shows the footage from the M10R and the bottom one from the Leica SL2 and you have here on the M10R 1 over 360 seconds, 1 over 90 seconds, that's two stops away, then 1 over 45 seconds, that's three stops, and 1 over 15 seconds, that's of course the extreme. And on the SL2 we have here 1 over 320 seconds, 1 over 80 seconds, 1 over 40 seconds, and 1 over 20 seconds. So let's quickly go to the Leica M10R image with, according to the light meter of the camera, correct exposure time. Let's go into the develop section and let's see what happens if we get here to auto. Then it gets a bit brighter and the shadows go better. So shadows go up, whites go up, blacks go down, uh, vibrance goes up. That's just the auto settings from Lightroom. But what I want to note here is on exposure, we have plus 0.34. So let's reset the image. Let's go into exposure and let's make 0.35 to make it a bit brighter. So what we're now going to do is for the Leica M10R series of images, we'll go for a match of total exposure. So we mark them all here. Then we go into exposure matching and uh, you see this here. 
So let's just click it. And then the upper series is kind of developed according to the suggestions from Lightroom, of course. Let's now look into the SL2 image here and let's do the same what we did before with the M10R image. Let's go into the develop section and uh, let's go for a moment to auto development here. Again, it becomes a bit brighter. So here the suggestion is on exposure around 0.52. Let's reset this. Let's give it here to 0.5. That's good. Let's go back to the library section. And now I think these two images here, they are pretty much comparable if we compare the Leica SL2 with the M10R. Let's again mark now the image series from the SL2. And let's go for a match of total exposure again. Here we go. And uh, that's basically it. So what's interesting if we look into the result coming from the match total exposure function in Lightroom is on the upper row, which is the Leica M10R, it's kind of the same level of brightness in the foreground if you look at the green grass here. On the lower row, if you look at the Leica SL2, the image which is three stops away here and the one which is more than four stops away here, after the match total exposure function is brighter on the grass. And I want to correct this now manually. The reason for this could be that somehow the Leica SL2 pixel map, since Lightroom is looking at the whole representation of all of the pixels in the image, might conflict somehow and uh, that's maybe why it is more bright here in the grass. There might be different reasons why we see what we see but I can correct this manually now. So let's go into this one here. Let's have a look on exposure actually. Lightroom did not suggest to go the full three stops down but close to two steps. Let's go now to minus 2.5 and correct this. And if we go now back into the library section I think now we have a match on the green grass here. And that's what we should actually have here. And the same on the very right hand side. Let's go into develop and let's see what we have here. So this is suggested by Lightroom minus 2.5 steps down. Let's go to minus 3 and let's go back into the library. This is still not enough, still too bright. Let's go to minus 3.5. I guess that's it. Yes, and now at least on the foreground on these green parts, which should interest us, of course, um, we have a match between all of the images. If we compare them, lower row, upper row, they are kind of the same from a level of brightness perspective. So if we look at these images now side by side, I think we can focus on the two comparable images where we are three stops towards overexposure and then at the two extreme situations where we completely overexpose the image. Because when we are two stops away, these images look the same. I also don't think we have to zoom into them because that worked well in all the other experiments I did and the reference images also look the same. Pretty much the same result on both cameras. So let's focus on the ones where we are three stops towards overexposure and the two extreme images here. So let's grab the two ones, the Leica M10R image, three stops overexposed and the Leica SL2 image, also three stops overexposed and let's put them side by side. And we see this here on the left hand side, the M10R, one over 45 seconds. On the right hand side, the SL2, one over 40 seconds. Uh, as I said many times, don't get confused here by the aperture of f3.4. The Leica M lenses do not channel through the information about the aperture towards the camera body. And I had shut them both at f5.6, Although on the SL2 here it says f6.8. So forget that information. What is relevant is the ISO 100 and the same lens of course. As I said this time I wanted to have exactly the same glass between the sensor and the scene in front of me. And that's what we achieved here in that comparison. So now when we look at the two images I should say probably my tripod moved a little bit when I dismounted the Leica M10R and then mounted the Leica SL2 on a tripod because the image composition is not exactly the same but almost the same and I think it's good enough for the test we want to do here. Now let's zoom into these images in particular on the sky and if we look at them I think there is not any recognizable difference here. That looks really good. There are parts where I would guess that some clipping took place in terms of pure white, if you look on the right hand side here to the Leica SL2 or maybe in some parts here, but it's really not a problem. So there is nothing recognizable here which would discount the recovery of the structure of the sky after going towards three stops overexposure. And if we look at the foreground, 
They also look the same, the coloring is the same, and since I also match the level of brightness, the brightness is the same. This looks very good, these images are kind of the same. And I would not conclude that there is any better recovery on information out of highlights on the Leica M10R or the Leica SL2. They seem to be of the same quality and uh, seem to have the same capabilities here. So let's go back and uh, let's go to the grid view here. So on three stops towards overexposure, all good. I do not find these differences I saw in my first comparison between the Leica M10R and the Leica SL2 and maybe in Ticino in this Italian speaking part of Switzerland, the weather changes very quickly and maybe when I switch between the cameras, some weather conditions changed in a way which made it harder for the Leica SL2 to recover out of highlights than it was before on the Leica M10R. I don't know, but here there is no confirmation of differences on dynamic range when it comes to highlights between the Leica M10R and the Leica SL2 sensor. I could basically stop the video here because in that series of three videos, and I will post the links on the other two videos down below in the info box, we confirmed that a range of plus minus three stops is fine on both camera sensors. And you can easily recover information out of shadows if you go up to three stops down. And you can also recover information out of highlights if you go three stops up. And uh, that's basically what people will seriously consider. No one will seriously consider to go beyond that. That's not, I think, what people will do. But since I had the opportunity to look into the two extremes here, so this is about 4.5 to 5 stops away from the reference image, I nevertheless want to quickly put them side by side before I close the video here. And there's something interesting going on. First of all, if we look into the foreground here, the recovery in the foreground is nice still very sharp, all the detail you would expect, coloring is nice, this looks really good. If you look at the sky, clearly highlight clipping at the very right hand side of the histogram kicked in and the structure of the sky is lost. That's what we would expect if we go more than four stops towards overexposure. What is eye catching here is the color of the horizon. And if we put them side by side on the left hand side on the Leica M10R, this turned into a sepia type black and white profile, whereas on the Leica SL2, we still have that bluish tint, which uh, we see also if we go back to the grid view on all the other images. And that's an outlier here. On the Leica M10R, this color information seems to be lost. And I think that's an interesting observation point, also not relevant because no one will seriously consider to go more than four stops towards overexposure in a shooting. So I hope that video was helpful for you and in particular for those who kept asking me questions in the comment section below my videos, what my final conclusions are, if I would confirm what I saw in Ticino in my first comparison between the M10R and the SL2. I think here I can conclude all good. There must have been something else going on. The dynamic range plus minus three stops towards under or over exposure works very nice on both cameras. They are able to recover information out of the shadows as well as out of the highlights. Recovery out of the shadows for the reasons I mentioned in my previous video, which you'll find the link down in the info box, is easier in general for all the reasons I outlined in that video, but it works also well if you overexpose by three full stops and you will typically be able to recover information out of overblown highlights. If this video and information was helpful to you, I would be happy about a like from you. And clearly there is always more content to come. Stay tuned on my channel. Stay safe and healthy during the coming week. Thanks for watching and peace out.